There is a lot of work that happens before we can just start whipping out material off the shelves, as if that could be done as well. Shop drawings or assembly and part sheets need to be conformed and created utilizing the design drawings, architectural and structural drawings that is. The various steel materials needed for the project then need to be calculated up or estimated in a process called nesting. How can we order steel in the most efficient way possible? Minimizing steel waste. This is what nesting helps us achieve. Hey, just wanna stop you here. Thanks for watching. Hit the notification bell, like, and subscribe to this video. The Worker Efficiency app is officially out on Apple and Android. We have so many tools in there, plus our 140 videos, just like the video you're watching right now, all in the library with a 30-day free trial. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. For example, we have a W21 by 50 steel beam that will be used throughout our four-story office building. Can we minimize drop or wasted steel that will be cut off by ordering 60-footer beams that we can cut three beam members from? Or can we order 15 pieces of steel that are as close to the final cut members as possible? Again, these are the questions we work to answer in the nesting process. Once bills of materials are calculated, finalized, and nested, material is purchased for the project. Then as shop drawings are approved for fabrication use, we need to have our handover meeting where drawings are released to the shop and the plan for sequencing or the steps to fabricating assemblies and parts in the correct order is communicated appropriately with our teams in the shop for that job. Tasks or work is delegated appropriately in the shop. And with that, we have our green light. We are ready to go. Now we just need material. The arrival of our purchased material marks the beginning of the fabrication process. Punch those time cards, baby. It's time to get to work. As we previously said, material is specific to each job. And with a shop that has multiple projects going on at once, it's easy for material to get lost in the thick of things. And with lost material or incorrectly processed steel for the wrong job, it creates rework or the repurchasing of a material again, which could set back the production schedule for the project, causing all sorts of overages. A shop that is not organized right out of the gate and throughout the entire process is not going to be set up for success. Organization in a shop means traceability and staging, or simply you have a means for tracking material and staging material in your shop so you know where to find what you need when you need it. When it comes to traceability or the means of helping us track material through the fabrication process, we utilize markings that are written into our steel by means of paint stick, stickers, and even barcodes if your shop has that capability. What is written on the steel at any given moment depends on what step in the fabrication process you are in. Don't worry, as we discuss the various steps in the fabrication process, we will continue to discuss what you can expect to see on your steel at any given point. It is actually our job to transfer those markings or adjust those markings as material is processed. Let's run through a quick scenario to help explain this idea of traceability through the shop using the same W-shaped steel we were discussing previously. That W21 by 50 steel beam will be used as a longitudinal support beam throughout every floor of our office building. Raw 21 by 50 by 44 foot steel beams have just arrived on the truck from the mill or the distributor. You would know how to read that material description if you went through how to read drawings beforehand. This is big 44 foot steel. This steel will have come from the distributor with specific markings on it that matches the purchase order as it pertains to the job. It will have heat number, which is the identification for the batch, makeup, and origin of the steel as it comes from the mill. Think of this as a serial number for steel. Mill certification, which lets you know the grade of the steel per the AIC standards. For example, our W21 by 50 beam here is an A992 grade steel. Material descriptions and dimensions inscribed or written on the steel according to the lengths and dimensions as it was ordered in the purchase order, which is W21 by 50 by 44 foot steel beam. Usually, one of the first markings we add to steel for means of traceability and tracking is the job number. Now, as that same steel, W-shaped steel, is processed and cut, it will receive new or additional markings for the means of identification. If you recall from how to read drawings, assemblies are made up of members and parts. Members being beam-shaped steel, in this case, our W-shaped steel, HSS tube steel, pipe, what have you, or what you could call our larger portion of our assembly. Parts being base plates, plates, angles, clips, or our smaller steel parts that are welded to our larger member and go into forming our assembly. Members receive a ship mark for identification and traceability once processed, while parts receive piece marks for means of identification and traceability once processed. 
So once our raw W21 by 50 by 44 foot beam has been cut to length to form the beginnings of a member for an assembly, according to a cut list, which the cut list will correlate with our assembly drawings. We need to rescribe that W-shaped steel with its correlating job number, example, job 2205. Shit mark, which identifies this member as the beginnings of an assembly. And potentially heat number, if you were cutting multiple members from this one long piece of steel, as an example, you would write the heat number or abbreviated heat number to identify the steel to its origin. As our W21 by 50 beam member is then processed to become a beam assembly, piece marks are matched to the ship mark per assembly drawings. Plates and connection clips alike are fit up and welded to the steel member to then become a beam assembly. Traceability markings can be easily wiped off steel as it moves through the process, so material is always being checked and or re-scribed with the correct markings throughout the entire process. Once our assembly is finished, our beam assembly, that is, the job number, ship mark, and even project north will be written on the steel to help with placement orientation when setting this column, something we will discuss later. You see, traceability is key when it comes to the fabrication process, and the reason this is one of the first topics we discuss going into fabrication. Let's just take a minute and talk about staging as well. As you are getting a sense of the amount of steel that comes through the shop being rather significant, we need to have our shops blocked for staging in every step of the process. For example, assemblies, columns, and beam assemblies alike may have various parts that will ultimately be fitted and welded to the main member forming our assembly. You could potentially have 32 plates, there being 11 versions of that plate. Without clear markings for traceability and steel being staged and blocked, our shop would be a hot mess. Large steel member material should be on horses or dunnage or steel racks that keep the material off the ground, and the steel itself should be organized by the job number, ship marks, and even heat mark numbers. So when needed or ready to move to the next stage in the fabrication process, things can move seamlessly. Parts should be organized by the table, pallet, whatever process you have, but it needs to be organized in a way where material can be found. Time is money, but also an organized shop is a safe shop which is most important at the end of the day. Traceability and staging is key in the fabrication process. Now, let's get into each step for the fabrication process. Hey, thanks for watching this video. It really does support us and help us out. Hit the notification bell, like, and subscribe to this video. The Worker Efficiency app is officially out on Android and Apple stores. Go download it. We have a 30-day trial, which gives you access to all of the tools such as time tracking, compliance management, and training, which includes that library of 140 plus videos or our 12 courses. Go try it out, 30 day free trial. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.